Today, from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and from the Holy Spirit, uh, and from the shallow Missionary Baptist Church here in Largo, Florida, where the Reverend Edward B. Hobson uh, serve as our pastor. We 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 thank God for the church being able to provide what we call a midweek cafe and we call it the midweek cafe because uh, the word tells us that man shall not live by bread alone but by our word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Let, let us pray. Father God, we do come this afternoon uh, with thanksgiving on our hearts. We thank you, Father, for this holy week. We thank you, Father, for your son, Jesus Christ. For all that he went through to deliver us and give us salvation by faith and grace. And we just want to say thank you. Pray, oh God, for the sick and the shedding and everywhere. We ask you to remember the, the bereaved families and remember those that are hospital by. We're not asking you to go there, Father, for we know that you're already there, but we ask you to have mercy upon them and bless them. Bless my mom and 
Thank you for delivering my wife from her struggle this past weekend. We thank you, Father, for we realize that you are a doctor in a sick room. You're a friend that stick closer than a brother. We thank you, Father, for the shallow church. We thank you for those that are work uh, in, 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 in the social media area to bring this false to you, to your peoples every day. Now we ask you to speak to us and through us. Father, have your way, we pray. Hide us behind you, Father, and let us say something that will grant someone a deeper appreciation for what this week represents and what all you, son, Jesus went through to bring to all of us salvation to receive it. Father, we let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, Lord, our strength, and our Redeemer. Amen. We, we want to look at the Word of God according to Mark, the 14th chapter, and, and that, that will be our main thought today. Mark 14, uh, verses 66 to 72, uh, from the New King James Version. Verse 66 says, Now as Peter was below in the courtyard, one of the servant girls of the high, high priest came, and when she saw Peter warming himself, she looked at him and said, You also were with Jesus of Nazareth. But he denied it, saying, I neither know nor understand what you are saying. And he went out on the porch, and the rooster crowed. And the servant girl saw him again and began to say to those who stood by, This is one of them. But he denied it again. And a little while later, those who stood by said to Peter again, Surely you are one of them. For you are a Galilean, and your speech show it. Then he began to curse and swear. I do not know this man of whom you speak. A second time the rooster crowed. Then Peter called to mind the word Jesus had said to him, before the rooster crows twice, you will deny me three times. And when he thought about it, he wept. And I want to talk to you today from, from this thought. Peter Denials of Jesus. Peter's denial, denial of Jesus. Among the things Jesus suffered was the indignity of Peter's denial. Now, it, it, the denial didn't catch Jesus by surprise, for he had told Peter earlier that he would deny him. But Peter, Peter said, Peter said, Peter said uh, in Mark 1, um, in, in the Gospel of Mark, but Peter said he wouldn't, he wouldn't deny him. Now Peter, Peter denied him saying, I do not know. I do not know him. 
No, Jesus, Jesus, listen at this step. Jesus, Jesus had a, had, 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 had been with Peter. And now, as soon as they had come out of the synagogue, they entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. But Simon's wife, mother, lay sick with a fever, and they told him about her. And, and, and she, yeah, yeah, they told him about her, told him about her. And Jesus healed her. Yeah, he healed her. On, on, on the feeble. He said, now as soon as they had come out of the synagogue, they entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John, but Simon's wife, mother, lost sick with the fever. And they told him about her at once. So he came and took her by the hand and lifted her up. And immediately she was healed. Yeah, immediately she was, she was healed. She was delivered. Amen. But yet, Peter said he didn't know him. Not only that, but uh, in Matthew 14 and chapter, 14th chapter, Matthew 22nd through the 33rd verse says, immediately Jesus made his disciples get into the boat and go before him to the other side while he sent the mother to away. And when he had sent the mother to away, he went up on the mountain by himself to pray. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now he, he sent that guy, told him to go get in the boat and Go to the, and then that's the same Peter that the Lord called to walk on the water. Peter walked on the water, and then as long as he kept his eyes on Jesus, he was able to walk on the water and not in the water. But when he took his eyes off Jesus, he began to sink. And, and, and while he was sinking, he remembered as long as he was looking at Jesus, he was able to walk on the water. But yet, when the pressure was on, he, he, he declared that he didn't know Jesus. You know, it's amazing how Jesus can do so much for us and be so good to us, and, and but but when we are threatened, uh, pressure is on. We forget that we know Him. Yeah, we we act just like we don't know Him. And not only that, but in, in, in Mark the ninth chapter, the second through the sixth verse. Yeah, when he took them up to the mountain, and in the, the, the ninth chapter, Mark, and the second through six verse says, Now, after six days, Jesus took Peter, James, and John and led them up on a high mountain apart by themselves, and he was transfigured before them. And his clothes became shining 
exceedingly white, like snow, and has and no and such as no laundering alerts a cleanser can can do. They they whiten them, and 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 Peter decided that we need to build tabernacle. Yeah. Yeah, 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 we 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 ought to build one, build three times. But Jesus re refused to to allow them to do that. But yet this same Peter said, you know, said, let's be one for seeing Jesus and and Moses and Elijah. How did Peter come to deny this Lord and Savior? What forces were at work that led him to this cowardly deed? Might they be forces that we face today encouraging us to do the same? You know, there, there are times when the, we are around other folks and around other situations caught up in a situation that will force us to deny Jesus. Sometimes just we deny him by just doing what the other folks are doing, going along with them. From Peter's denial of Jesus, there are important lessons to be learned. Indeed, Peter himself can help us to avoid making the mistakes he made when he writes as one who knows the danger before us. For example, we note, first of all, that, number one, Peter was betrayed by pride. Peter was betrayed by pride. He boasted he he would never deny Jesus. In Matthew uh, fourteen and twenty seven through twenty nine, he said, so then Jesus said to him, All of you will be be made to stumble because of me this night, for it is written. I will be. I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep will be scattered. But after I have been raised, I will go before you to Galilee. And Peter said to him, "Even I, even if all stumble." I will not stumble. Yeah, I, I will not stumble. I will, in other words, I will hang in there with you, Lord. And then the word tells us, uh, in, in, in Peter, in, in doing so, Peter took the first step in falling away. Proverbs 16 and 18 tells us, pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before fall. Not only that, but uh, we can be overconfident in our service to God. You know, Peter, Peter do not became over. Oh, confident in his service to God. Listen to what, what he says in 1 Corinthians 10 and verse 12. So therefore, let him who thinks he stands take heed, lest he fall. So we, 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 we can't do nothing of our own but mess up and fall, but, but take heed. Yeah, 
Therefore, let him who stands take heed lest he fall. In other words, don't go around. But I'm doing this and I'm doing that. Uh, the thing is, and sometimes we get caught up in the fight that somebody else is down. And, and because we haven't fallen in the mud yet, uh, slipped down, we, we we look down on them. But I heard somebody wrote a song once, they don't, don't look down on a man unless you pick in him up. So Peter later commanded humility. Said so to be clothed, he says in First Peter verse five and five, for us to be clothed in humility. It reaches so say likewise, young people, submit yourselves to your to to your elders. Yes, all of you be submissive to one another and the 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 the, the clothes be clothed with humility. God resists the proud, but give grace to the humble. Yeah, yeah, give grace to the humble. So, so and in First Peter five and six, he said, says for us to humble, not for humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, and he that he may exalt you in due time. In other words, don't you exalt yourself, but humble yourself under the mighty hand of God, that he might exalt you in due time. So we see the first point here is Peter was betrayed by pride. Peter learned the hard way about the danger of pride. Will we learn from the mistakes of Peter and value the importance of humility? Somebody else said, somebody once said that, you know, you can learn from your mistakes, but it's better to learn from other mistakes. Peter learned the hard way about the day of pride. Will you learn from the mistakes of Peter and value the importance of humility? Next thing I want you to notice, the first point was Peter was betrayed by pride. But the second point is Peter was besieged by laziness. Yeah. Laziness had gotten the best of him. Was, as he kept falling asleep, at a time when he needed to be watchful, verses uh, Mark, the 14th chapter, verse 37 through 42 tells us, then he came and found them sleeping. And said to them, Peter, Simon, are you sleeping? <clears throat> Could you not watch with me one hour? Watch and pray, lest you enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Again, he went away and prayed and spoke. The same words. So not only did uh, you, you spoke the same way, words, and Peter's laziness therefore led 
to lack of preparation. You know, sometimes we we're just sleeping and laboring around when we ought to be praying, making preparations for 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 you know, somebody said uh, you you need to make preparation in a time of peace for a time of war. The same thing can can happen to us without diligently preparation, diligent preparation. We too can be unprepared. Luke 21, verse 34 through 36. Said, but check it to yourself, lest you, your heart be weighed down with surrounding. Drunkenness and cares of this life, they come on you unexpected, for it will come as a snare on all those who dwell the surroundings. Of the world, world care. So Peter kept falling, falling asleep. Not only that, but more often than not, we gradually drift away because we are too lazy to give the more honest heed. He ruled. Two, chapter 2, verse 1 through, through 3, we read, Therefore, we must give the, the, the more honest heed to the things we have heard, lest we will drift away. For if the word spoken to angels prove steadfast, and every transgression and disobedience receives a just reward, how shall we escape if we, we do likewise? Yeah, we we have come to the same thing others have succumbed to. You know, we we need to make sure that we stay abreast and awake. In fact, the Bible says, man ought to always pray and not say faint. Not only that, but Even later, enjoyed diligence, commanding vigorous resistance against the evil. Peter, First Peter, five and verse eight through nine, to be so will be valiant. Because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Resist him steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same suffering are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. They said, brace yourself. And somebody else said that if you see the devil, brace yourself because he, he will attack. 
Not only that, but uh, he calling for diligence that we might grow in the grace and knowledge of Jesus. Second Peter, verses 5 and 10. Not only that, but calling for diligence that we might be found in peace without spot and blameless. Second Peter 3 and 14. Do we allow simple laziness, carelessness, us from careful preparation do we fall do we fail to attend services study God's word or even pray because of laziness if so how can we hope to stand up for Jesus when put to the test as we continue, we observe that point number three. Peter was beset by cowardice. Point number two, he was besieged by laziness. Point number one, was portrayed by pride. Yes, he followed Jesus at a distance. Peter still followed Jesus, but he was not close to Jesus. And Mark 14 and 54 we find, but Peter followed him at a distance, right into the courtyard of the high priest. And he sat with the servants and warmed himself at the fire of the enemies. But, but now, Jesus was unpopular. In other words, they had decided to crucify him. And they tried him in a kangaroo court. And now found him guilty. He had stayed far enough away so not to be identified with him. He was prepared, unprepared to face the challenge of ridicule and persecution. Yeah, the second thing is, yeah, he, he stayed far enough away because they had found Jesus guilty And he was afraid that they might find him guilty of trying to follow Jesus. But with cowardice, uh -huh. he was ashamed to be seen carrying a Bible. Yet might we be guilty of trying to follow Jesus from a distance? but with cowardice. Are we ashamed to be seen carrying a Bible? Are we ashamed to be seen giving thanks to the Lord? Are we ashamed to be seen with other Christians? He the later exhorted to glorify God. charging us not to be ashamed, but glorify God. And 
I heard a song saying if I couldn't do nothing but wave, wave my hand. Yeah, because of all God has done for me, I would just wave my hand. If I couldn't do nothing else, I would just wave my hand. Yes, if anyone suffers as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God in this matter. Thinking not of what things mean to us, but what they mean to God. Yeah. Let us your light shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. I'm so glad that I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. I'm not ashamed to let nobody know what side I'm on. Thinking not of what things mean to us, but what they mean to the Lord. With cowardness, keep with coward, keeping him at a distance from the Lord. Peter was proud candidate for succumbing to what came next. Yeah, in the fourth point, the fourth and the last point, Peter was beled by worldliness. Yeah, he was beled by worldliness. He was influenced by the word, by the world. So he was influenced by the world. He was sitting with the servants of the high priest and warming himself by their fire. Mark 14 and 54, he was uh, influenced by the world. Yeah, he was ashamed to be seen with Christ. That's why he followed him from a distance. It was easy to mingle with those of the world and enjoy their comfort. Not only that, but one cannot be comforted by the fire of the world and not be burned. Not only that, but those close contact with things that can harm us and affect us. Yeah, if you are Christian and you're serving the law, you're not to be caught drinking what they call a silly juice with the world. You ought not to be ashamed to be seen with Christ. It was easy to mingle with those of the world and enjoy their comfort. But one cannot be comforted by the fire of the world and not get burned. Uh, you can be comforted by the Holy Spirit and the Word of God and not be burned. See, I'm reminded right along now about the three Hebrew boys that were thrown in the fiery furnace. Yes, they were thrown in the fiery furnace because they wouldn't bow to our God. 
Yes, but uh, when they threw him in the fire furnace, they found that Jesus was in the fire and furnace. And the word says that not a half on their head was singed. So we cannot flirt, flirt with the world and walk away untouched. Peter later called for us to be part of the world. To live and sojourning, sojourners and pilgrims, abstaining from filthy loss and from world of activity, to live and sojourners and pilgrims, abstaining from fleshly lust and with honor and conduct among the nations. We need to be sure to God all the time. First Peter 2, 11 through 12. Believe, I beg, beloved, I beg you as sojourners and pilgrim abstain from fleshly lust, which wars against the soul, having your conduct honorable among the Gentile, that when they speak against you and evildoers, they may by your conduct and your good works, which they observe Have mercy, Lord. Bella, later call for us to. Peter later called for us to be otherworldly. To look for the new heaven and the new earth, being diligent to be found as Christ by Christ in peace, but not spot of blameless. Uh-huh. When Peter concluded his second epistle, he did so with a warning. Beware. Beware. Least you fall from your own steadfastness. Second Peter three and seventeen says, "You therefore be love, since you know this aforehand. Be well, lest you rise." You, lest you also fall from your own steadfastness, being away, being led away with the inner errors of the wickedness. Let me, let me, let me say that again. Be you, you therefore, beloved, since you know the this aforehand, beware lest you also fall from your own steadfastness, be led away with the error of the wicked. Yes, then he also wants us to grow in the grace and knowledge of Christ. Second Peter 3 and 18. These admonitions come from one who was well qualified to speak, for he knew how easy it was to fall through these things as 
do these such things as pride, laziness, cowardness, and worldliness. Yeah, he knew how to fall. But he also knew how one could grow in grace through such things as humility, diligence, and glorifying God, living as strangers and sojourners. Yes, we know that Peter thought he, though he denied Jesus three times, well, bitterly received the peace when God forgave gave him. He was able to go on and preach and teach God's word. Yeah, so let's avoid pride and, uh, and humble ourselves. Uh, let's not be lazy and slowful, but pray at all times. Let's not uh, be coward, but glorify God wherever we are. And uh, we should not just focus on this world, but know that this world is not our home. Then he wants us to fear not him who can destroy the body, but for here, fear him who can destroy the body and soul. Father, we thank you for these words. And we thank you, Father, for the example that Peter led. Even though he knew of God, he really didn't know all about God. He really didn't know him. Because later on, Jesus said to him, when thou art converted, Peter, strengthen the brothers. So he, Peter really wasn't all that he needed to be yet when he denied Jesus. But later on, he became familiar and, 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 and in a relationship with Jesus. And, and yes, he, he, he didn't deny him no more. He, Matter of fact, he lived for him and he died for him. Father, we thank you for the example and we pray, oh God, that someone will heed Peter's instruction not to be lazy, be proudful and keeping their eyes open and, 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 and be diligent in their work and glorifying you at all times. We pray, oh God, that you would help us to not lean to our own understanding, but in all our ways acknowledge you. And as the song said, take us by our hand and lead us on, for we know that this world is not our own. We're just passing through. But if you hold our hand and guide our tongue and our mind, we'll think the right way. We will talk the right way and we will act the right way if you get our feet and, and and we don't want to run this race in vain in Jesus name we amen if you want to be saved and you want the strength to be able to do what God told you to do you need to heed his word that Paul Paul said that if if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus believe in your heart and God is raised from the dead. He said, Thou shalt be saved. Say, for with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. And then you need to unite with a church that is teaching the God's word. To be blessing good evening. And the song is saying, Hold my hand while I run this race. For I do not want to run this race in vain. Thank you.